Philip, there's a lot of organisation within Australia offering e-learning solutions. For a company to start off their research in terms of deploying a solution, where should they start? You're right, there are a lot of organisations providing that type of service and there are some very good ones within that industry. Um, from our perspective, we tend to work with some of the larger organisations and particularly with the customer uh, face of that organisation. So typically we'll work within industries, we've worked with companies such as Deloitte's and so forth to enable them to understand the changes that are coming. We've worked directly with Griffith University, with Victoria, the, sorry, the Alfred Hospital in Victoria. Um, obviously we can't work with everybody, so I think it's important that the typical content provider that you may be working with in terms of the technology is usually very well associated with what's going on in that world of, of content delivery and learning in that context. So I think we probably have to look to who we're working with in that hardware environment, who is working in the, in the software, and typically between the two there's a collaborative effort to find what is right for a large organisation, for e-learning or a smaller organisation. Being part of the senior team of Intel, yeah. having access to various forms of case studies in terms of e-learning initiatives, who would you say is having a greater degree of success in implementing e-learning? Government or for-profit enterprises? I don't think we can say it's one or the other. I think they're both doing it in different ways. If you looked at my earlier examples, it's uh, three of them are private companies and the other half would be um, government or government sector. So I think it goes back to outcomes and, and, and the business case. If you think of it from uh, the teaching hospital, the real use of technology in the teaching hospitals is to take what is essentially a paper-based system today and bring it forward into the, you know, the 21st century to use technology to underpin the delivery of teaching within the hospital environment, uh, wireless technology at the bedside care, uh, tablet, you know, uh, laptop technology in the, in the emergency care unit. And we're typically doing that, you know, for instance, with the Alfred Hospital. And that's really what it's about. You can't simply hang it back and say, you know, we need to have a particular budget for these kind of things. It's about if the outcome you desire for your business or your government body is the right one, then you will, the best way to go about it is to invest in the technology. It seems that the message is that outcomes is as important in developing an e-learning initiative within an organisation. Oh, clearly, yeah, yeah. Simply doing it for doing its sake is not, it's not going to be effective, you're not going to have the budget for it, you're not going to get the outcome that you want for it. And for IT to deliver for you, it has to be able to stand that rigour of, you know, a budgetary process and an outcome-driven process and, and you know, typically at Intel that's the way we've worked and we try to distill that uh, to anybody that we're working with in collaboration. Yeah, I guess so. Intel being a pioneer in developing new markets around the globe, what are perhaps some lessons learned from successful and not as successful e-learning initiatives? We haven't really had an unsuccessful one um, to date so we're very pleased about that and on the successful ones um, collaboration is the key to the, to the success of it. If you look at what we're doing with our Teach to the Future program, uh, as I said earlier, we have some 3,000 3, teachers trained to date so far within, the, within Australia. We've collaborated with the departments, both uh, Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, to, to drive this program, to enable it to happen. They take the view that the benefit happens both at the teacher and professional development and also down to the student in the primary sector um, in terms of their development with technology, their embedding of technology into the curriculum and their use and the outcomes they get with, with that technology. And let me give you a better example of that. In one of the uh, examples that I would give you that we have used, some year seven students uh, are working on a project that is uh, assessing the fitness classes. And in a typical world prior to the development of the program, they would have done it in a, in a you know, a charts and uh, you know, pencil drawings and, and some rudimentary learning. Fast forward through the program, the teacher has attended the, the uh, Teach to the Future program. They are able to develop technology embedded within the curriculum again. The students are now using graphs and charts and multimedia and have, have a whole lot of range of skills that have made the program even more exciting and more interesting for them. And the outcomes they get are that they, they find it's the, the subject is even more fascinating than it was when they started to think about it. They're learning more about fitness. They can collaborate using broadband technology 
with other schools, with other student bodies, they've got access to the internet for a whole lot more information than they would have had. And the outcomes, goes back to the outcomes, the outcomes that they are getting, we have a, a bunch of year seven students who are fan doing fantastically well on this particular program. Their teacher is delighted and the results that they're getting have improved out of sight. So you know, one good example of how you can actually underpin it with that. Clearly broadband is important in terms of broadband being implemented throughout organisations. But how important is rich broadband? You have touched upon my favourite topic. So it is essential. It is essential that we have rich broadband, not even the beginning of the first part of it, but the rich broadband capability throughout this entire country. It's essential that we have it up and down the coastline to the major cities. It's essential that we have it to every school and within that context to every university and so forth and every teaching environment. It's essential that we then have it out in the remoter areas. There are technology advances that are happening that will enable uh, wireless and Wi-Fi and WiMAX to deliver broadband out into regional and rural Australia. In fact, there's a government fund that has driven some of that. And Intel, at Intel, we've been actively involved in uh, a number of research projects and a number of pilot schemes to, uh, to really show how that can happen. It's essential because it opens up the capability at the student level in that context to access information to collaborate real time from state to state, school to school, city to city, and country to country. And it opens and broadens out that real possibility of worldwide learning. And broadband is the beginning of that. And then rich broadband, up to three, four megabit capability broadband. And think of that broadband capability with every student having full access to that. And you just start to see how fascinating that will be and how important broadband will be.